Um, today we're having our webinar with uh, Dr. Ahmed Afsar, and it's on the MOPV2 vaccine management. And Ahmed's going to walk us through the objective, which is to provide an overview of the Global Polio Eradication Initiative's management guidelines for MOPV2, including release procedures, handling, retrieval, and reporting following essays and disposal. And there's a number of um, great pictures and illustrations and forms and the actual tools that you would be using in vaccine management that we'll go through. And at the end, we'll take questions. So if you have questions, please drop them down. And then at the end, we'll go through them with Amit. And uh, we hope that you uh, enjoy the webinar. And we will share the recording afterwards in case you need to drop off or if the connection fails. So I'll pass it over to you, Amit. Thank you very much, Alex, and good morning, good afternoon, good evening, everybody. So, um, yeah, that's the nice thing of webinar. I know that some of you are on pajamas, and uh, I'm not. And and uh, hopefully uh, we will be discussing a lot of uh, stuff with, uh, related with MOPV2 management, because this is uh, going to be next big thing, I think, in the in the polio uh, polio eradication program. So, um, so you all uh, remember that we had a switch uh, from TOPV to BOPV uh, last year, actually in in April and and uh, early May, uh, and we we withdrew uh, all the the the, the type two uh, OPV vaccine uh, during that switch process. So after that, we all countries uh, reached a zero uh, type two, two, two vaccine status. So there shouldn't be any uh, type two vaccine in the countries after that that switch process. So this created a kind of uh, uh, immunity gap against type 2, two, two vaccine and uh, two type 2 virus and uh, because there is no type 2 vaccination uh, in the routine uh, it created a birth cohort now uh, that uh, haven't seen a type 2, two, two vaccine and haven't received uh, any any uh, immunization uh, except uh, IPV uh, against a uh, type 2 vaccine uh, type 2 viruses. So, uh, in this state, uh, after switch, any case of uh, type 2 polio virus or any isolate of type 2 polio virus will be considered as a potential uh, global public health threat. And uh, this is why we have to, to, to organize a very rapid response against that, that threat. And, and uh, to do this, uh, we recommend uh, mass uh, vaccination campaigns with uh, monovalent type 2 or MOPV2 uh, polio vaccine. So um, it is actually a very safe vaccine. It is the, the same old vaccine that we have been using for, for, for many years. Uh, it's just one, one component of type 3 uh, TOPV. Uh, so it is the same vaccine, but that vaccine is uh, a little bit uh, tricky. Uh, if you can't reach to, to, to high immunity levels and uh, can't, uh, and, and under immunized populations, uh, rarely it can create uh, some uh, circulating, it can mutate itself to, 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 to a circulating uh, type 2 virus. So this is why uh, we have to be very careful about using a monovalent type 2 uh, polio virus. Uh, polio uh, vaccine. And, and uh, we have to be uh, have very, very strict uh, stock management and, and vaccine management protocols there. But it is not a hazardous material. And it should not be uh, referred to, to as, a, as a as a hazardous material. It's very safe. Uh, it is very uh, potent, effective vaccine that we have been using for uh, for years. And uh, if you look at the the, the, the vaccine uh, itself, uh, currently we have just manufacturer, so you can see the vaccine available, MOPV2 uh, vaccine available uh, from that manufacturer. So it is. Uh, uh, very similar to, 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 to BOPV that we are currently using. Even the boxes are very similar for, from the same manufacturer. So we, again, administer uh, two drops per dose. Uh, 
which is uh, presented in 20 dose vials. And we have VVM type 2, so it is, again, uh, very heat sensitive, and it's not uh, sensitive to freezing. You can freeze and thaw several times. It doesn't affect the, 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 the vaccine. Uh, normally, we uh, keep them uh, MOPV2 in uh, freezer at uh, minus 20 uh, degrees Celsius, but you can also keep it in uh, in the refrigerator between 2 to 8 degrees Celsius, and you can just uh, move between refrigerator and freezer without uh, hesitation. So this vaccine is uh, covering a little bit less space than a. Uh, uh, then the, the, the TOPV and BOPV. So in for TOPV, we were expecting something like 1.2 1, 1 1, uh, 1 cubic centimeter per dose. Uh, for BOPV, it is about uh, 0 0.8 cubic centimeter per dose. And for, for, for uh, monovalent MOPV2, uh, it's, it's about 0 0.5 cubic centimeter per dose. But this is in the secondary boxes that you see on the uh, screen. If you use... Uh, if you try to, to, to store them in uh, uh, international uh, shipping cartons, then, then you see something uh, 3.8 uh, cubic centimeter per dose. It is much, much larger than, uh, than the, the, the secondary packaging. So MOPV2 is uh, also unique in several ways because it's First of all, not registered in the countries, but we use a WHO pre-qualified uh, manufacturer's vaccine. So uh, it is uh, pre-qualified, uh, and uh, it has the, the certificates uh, from the, 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 the manufacturing country. So, so it is actually uh, quite acceptable for, for almost all countries. And it is not available directly from the manufacturers. Uh, you cannot just go and buy uh, MOPV2 from, from any manufacturer, so it's not possible to, to, to sell them. And it is only available uh, from the global stockpile, uh, which is controlled by WHO. And uh, a very special uh, requesting mechanism is needed. And, and uh, very uh, strict uh, storage and transaction uh, rules apply to, to the MOPV2 management. So actually, you have to keep track of every while uh, going into the field, uh, and you have to collect them uh, between the, 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 the rounds. So that uh, containment is, is, is quite different than uh, many other uh, SIAs that we, uh, many other vaccines that we are using for SIS, so it was not necessary in TOPV, it was not necessary, it's not necessary in BOPV, but for MOPV2, uh, you have to recollect all vials, all empty, uh, partially used or unopened vials from the field and bring them back to the uh, to a central store that we are going to discuss uh, soon. And uh, we have to dispose of uh, all of the all vials, uh, all open and open vials, uh, at the end of the the, the uh, outbreak. But uh, to to uh, dispose of unopen vials, we have to 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 wait for outbreak response assessment uh, results and uh, OBRA uh, recommendations uh, for, for disposal. So let's start from the, the, the beginning, uh, how to, to, to make the request of MOPV2. So this is uh, the, 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 the special form that uh, we have to fill in uh, for MOPV2 uh, requests. So uh, it's not automatic. Uh, you cannot just uh, go uh, to, to the website and and download the, the, the form and uh, fill in and, and then send to, to WHO. It's not like that. But, but you know, there are lots of uh, GPI, uh, Global Polio Education uh, Initiative partners, uh, get into to, to, to these discussions. And uh, once uh, it is uh, agreed that uh, Usually, UMG uh, makes that decision together with the with the country authorities. Once it is agreed that uh, we are going to use MOPV2, you have to the, the countries have to 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 fill in this uh, special form, 
and then uh, sent to WHO uh, regional office. WHO regional office uh, reviewed the, the, the form and sent to, to, to uh, GPI, the advisory group. And an advisory group reviewed the form and then uh, asked uh, authorization from WHO director general and uh, currently Margaret Chan signs the authorization and then a uh, supply division, UNICEF supply division, take care of the, 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 the logistics after that. But uh, without uh, WHO's uh, director general's uh, authorization, uh, vaccine cannot be moved from the, the, the manufacturer's uh, stores to, 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 to the country store. So this is actually quite uh, special. And uh, in this form, uh, we have to mention uh, all the target groups, all the, the geographical locations uh, uh, that we are going to, to, to vaccinate. So you really have to prepare an outbreak response plan, and this uh, this form should be uh, filled in after that outbreak response plan in, 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 uh, and covering all the, the, the regions, all the areas, and all the, the, the target age groups uh, that uh, mentioned in that outbreak response plan. So, uh, yeah, we have to use this form uh, for, for uh, several stages. Actually, uh, we have a stage one a response, which is the, the, the immediate response. And there is a stage two response, which can cover a larger geographical area or even a different uh, age group. Uh, and uh, it can cover uh, several rounds, uh, second, third, and uh, fourth, even fifth rounds, uh, depending on the, 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 the country and the situation. So uh, we fill in the, the, the form for all uh, stages, stage one. And this is for the stage two. So uh, it is very similar. Uh, so there's enough space for all rounds that uh, planned for. So so it is important to know that, uh, that the first stage is usually uh, covers only one round, and it usually covers uh, 500,000 doses or 500,000 uh, children uh, under five. And then the second round and uh, third round and fourth round uh, can cover a larger population, about two million or even higher. So once we, we, we sent the, 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 the uh, request form, the request uh, processed in, in, in uh, supply division. And actually, uh, supply division informs the manufacturer uh, much before we, we received the, the request form, so uh, to, to, to make the necessary preparations. And our aim is to, to, to bring the vaccine within seven days uh, after the, the, the case is, is confirmed. So it really takes uh, a lot of uh, rush in, in, in a supply division. And uh, Thank God we haven't uh, failed uh, yet in any any uh, outbreak response, but uh, it really depends on uh, how quick you prepare the forms and how pre quick you prepare the uh, the outbreak response plans, and uh, you know and and get the, the authorization from the, the the Ministry of Health and and the the, the uh, WHO. So. Uh, once the, 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 the vaccine arrives to country, uh, we have to, 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 to check the vaccine vials and prepare the vaccine arrival report. This is the routine uh, vaccine arrival report. But, but the only difference is we have to, to, to prepare, prepare this uh, vaccine arrival report immediately and just within 24 hours. And we have to label the vaccines uh, it's very, very uh, specifically uh, saying that uh, the, the vaccine, con uh, the, the boxes uh, contains MOPV2, and uh, uh, it should be uh, used only for the, the, the outbreak uh, region. So the, the vaccine shouldn't be sent to uh, to, to any other uh, district or or, or uh, facility. So that uh, labeling is 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 very important. And uh, that labels uh, show the the, the, uh, the handlers, vaccine handlers, uh, that 
that vaccine is specific and that vaccine should be uh, should not be mixed with, with, with the other vaccines. So MOPV2 is, is special in this regard also. So uh, the vaccine should be deployed only to the outbreak uh, affected areas, nowhere else. So uh, it is very important to, to, to uh, label and separate the, the, the vaccine from other ones. And uh, even the, 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 the shipments uh, are important. Uh, you have to, to, to ship the, the, the MOPV2 vaccine separately uh, from the, the, the other vaccines. So uh, this is an, an uh, just imaginary uh, cold store. And there are uh, several uh, walking cold rooms, the, the green ones, and some uh, freezer rooms, the, the, the blue ones. Uh, you can just select one uh, freezer room, or uh, if you have just freezers, you can select a couple of uh, freezers to contain the, the, the uh, MOPV2. Uh, it is good to, to, to keep them separately uh, from, from all other uh, vaccines. So if you look at this uh, cold room, you can see that uh, it's not very well managed. So, so the vaccine is uh, here in the uh, in the central zone of the the the, the uh, cold room. So. Uh, it's just in the middle. Uh, it is far from the, 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 the entrance. And uh, all other vaccines in this uh, freezer room is, is, is BOPV and some, some other uh, different types of uh, vaccine, most probably. You can find some MR uh, vaccine on the top. But, but uh, the, the, the point is uh, here, uh, MOPV2 is mixed with uh, BOPV. So if the, 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 the handlers uh, are not very careful, uh, they can ship MOPV2 instead of BOPV, or they might ship BOPV instead of MOPV2 to, uh, to the campaign sites. And again, you can see that there are uh, lots of ice packs, uh, some some boxes. Uh, God knows what we have in that. I mean, most probably they are BOPV uh, on these uh, ice packs. It's like an ice pack C. Uh, so it is very hard to, 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 to manage vaccine in this kind of uh, freezer room. This is a real uh, example uh, from, a, uh, from a country. And this is also uh, a, a, a smaller size uh, cold store. We have a, on the right, uh, you can see the, the, the MOPV2 vaccine is, is uh, in a special, special uh, freezer, so so we have only MOPV2 vaccine in this in this freezer, uh, with some ice packs, uh, but but other than MOPV2, nothing exists in that freezer. So this is a very good practice. Or on the on the left hand side, you can see that MOPV2 vaccine is in the uh, freezer, so it's just using a uh, part of the freezer, and it is covered with a, a sheet of uh, ice pack and with a label saying that it is MOPV2, so it is not possible to, 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 to mix uh, uh, the, the, the vaccine MOPV2 with, with other uh, vaccines that uh, kept in the same freezer. This is also another good practice. This is a, a solar direct drive uh, refrigerator freezer uh, combined uh, uh, equipment. Is it? It's on the on the right hand side. You can see the freezer compartment, and we have MOPV2 uh, labeled and. Uh, stored in that uh, freezer compartment together with the ice packs. And on the left hand side, you can see that uh, there are uh, uh, other vaccines uh, that we use for routine immunization or, or BOPV. So it is possible to lock and unlock uh, these compartments separately. And during the, the, the campaign, they just uh, unlock the, the, the MOPV2 uh, compartment, and they keep the, the, the other uh, routine immunization vaccines uh, compartment uh, locked. So it is not possible to, 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 to mix the vaccine uh, with each other. But it is
is also uh, it's always possible to uh, mix the vaccines, so we have to be very careful about, especially the supervisors and and uh, health facility managers uh, should check uh, the, the vaccine uh, containers and uh, equipment. Uh, all cold chain equipment, uh, just to be sure that uh, no vaccine is is, is uh, no MOPV2 is mixed to 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 other uh, compartments. And uh, at the end of the 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 the, 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 the SIA round, in each round, uh, we have to 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 collect all the vaccines uh, from uh, the 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 field level from vaccinators and bring them back to 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 the health facilities. So all uh, unopened vials should be kept in the uh, cold chain, and uh, it should be. Uh, located in the health facility. In some uh, countries, uh, in most countries in Africa, uh, they prefer uh, to, to, to keep all the vaccines at the at a central store. So uh, at state level or, or, or uh, the national central store, uh, even after each, each SIA round. All open wires uh, need to be discarded. So we collect all open wires after each uh, campaign round, and uh, we keep them in in in, in uh, containers, uh, which I will show you, or in sacks. Uh, so so we will just uh, keep them and and destroy them immediately after the uh, after the round. So. Uh, all unopened vials, uh, we can use them uh, for the second round uh, or the next round, uh, but um, it is important to check their uh, VVM status and uh, if they have the labels or, you know, uh, all uh, other uh, quality indicators need to be checked. And uh, following each uh, SIA, Around we have to, to 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 fill in the routine forms like vaccine utilization report, and uh, we also have a new form uh, only uh, record needed uh, after the the MOPV2 uh, vaccination rounds. So it is called as form A, and. Uh, you can download that form from the, 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 the website, uh, polioeducation.org website, which I will uh, show you later. So it is very important to, 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 to uh, keep the records properly, and record keeping starts from the, 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 the vaccinator. So the, this is a telesheet example. Uh, I'm sure you can use uh, other telesheets, but it's important to have uh, that, uh, you know, uh, selected area, uh, doses of uh, OPV, how many doses were received uh, by the uh, vaccination team, and how many doses uh, returned uh, by the vaccination team. It's, it's the, the, the most important record for us uh, to, to, to check. So this is uh, uh, showing an important uh, uh, point in the the, the, the the campaigns, MOPV2 campaigns. In MOPV2 campaigns, we keep all the vaccines, all MOPV2 vaccines in uh, ziplocked or, or uh, residable bags. Uh, so these bags uh, can, can contain up to 20, 25 uh, vials in each. And uh, this is the, the bag that you have to, to, to put all open and unopen vials uh, during the, 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 the campaign in the, in the uh, vaccine carriers. Uh, the, the idea is to, to, to reduce the, the contamination risk as much as possible by using this uh, resealable uh, plastic bags. And after each uh, day, uh, all vaccinators come back to the health facilities uh, and they bring their uh, uh, open and unopened wires uh, back to the health facility. Here you can see a supervisor is, is, is collecting uh, all open wires and uh, unopened wires from the field uh, in the picture. It is very important to document this, this uh, reverse logistics activity. So, so he is actually very carefully uh, calculating the, the, the vials that he sent and he received, and uh, he's just checking the records uh, from the vaccinators. 
And actually, uh, this is a form from uh, Nigeria. Uh, they used a special form uh, for for reporting all the the, the, the vaccine wires, all returning vaccine wires, and the pen markers and all other uh, equipment that they use uh, during the vaccination campaign. And all vaccines, open vials. Uh, are collected in sacks and uh, they are uh, closed, counted and closed uh, carefully. And you can see that uh, they are ready for for uh, decontamination and and uh, and uh, burning. So uh, reverse cold chain is important at this stage. So all the vaccines returning from the field should be all, all unopened vials uh, should be in the in the cold chain. And if uh, the country uses a multi-dose vial policy during the uh, the, the campaign, uh, also the open, uh, partially used open vials should should be. Uh, uh, coming back to the health facility in, in, in proper cold chain equipment. So that uh, same rules uh, that uh, OPV distribution applies to, 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 to that reverse cold chain also. And, and uh, you know, it is not uh, possible to damage it by freezing. Uh, so, so MOPV is uh, not freeze sensitive. So you can use ice or ice packs on reverse cold chain and uh, it will not uh, damage the, the, the vaccine. But uh, it is very heat sensitive, so it is very important to use proper uh, vaccine carriers or cold boxes on the reverse cold chain also, not only the forward uh, cold chain. And uh, on return, uh, we have to check all the labels, VVMs. Uh, if labels are not intact, we should just separate them and uh, put them into uh, open open vials, and if VVM is not showing uh, a usable stage, uh, if it is beyond the discard point, we have to discard uh, all those unopened vials. And uh, if there's any other sign of damage, uh, it's showing that uh, quality is compromised, we have to, to get rid of those vials uh, after uh, receiving in the reverse cold chain and put them into uh, the, the same pile with open vials so we can destroy, uh, discard them. Uh, again, uh, it is important to, 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 to keep the records of uh, that reverse cold chain, uh, the, 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 all the, the, the vaccine that uh, return within the, the reverse cold chain. So after the last SIA round, uh, there are some differences. I mean, for the open wires, there is no difference. Uh, you can just collect all open wires and discard them immediately. In a health facility or in some uh, regions, uh, some countries, they prefer uh, not to discard in health facility, but at district level or at even a higher level. It really depends on the, 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 the country's decision and the, the, the availability of the facilities. Uh, but uh, after the last SIA round, uh, we try to collect all the unopened wires in uh, reverse cold chain at a central facility and then wait for the outbreak response assessment team uh, to, to come and visit and see if we need to, to use those uh, unopened wires uh, for, for a further round or, or some mop-up campaigns or some something else. So. Uh, and until that OBRA decision, uh, we shouldn't touch the the, 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 uh, the unopened vials. We should just uh, keep them in, in, in uh, all together and mark them and uh, try to keep it separately uh, from all other vaccines. And then uh, after the OBRA's decision uh, to, 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 to destroy those uh, unopened vials, uh, we can just use uh, standard techniques to, to, to uh, inactivate them and then uh, destroying them. So, uh, and, and it is very important to document all these uh, stages. So how many doses were sent, how many doses were received, uh, and how many doses were destroyed uh, should be reported. And we use uh, Form A uh, for, for, for this kind of reporting. 
for after all uh, SIA rounds and after the last round, we have to fill in the Form A and uh, that Form A should be sent to, to, to WHO and UNICEF headquarters uh, for uh, reporting purposes. And again, after the last outbreak response assessment, last round, uh, we have to use vaccine utilization report again uh, to, to report uh, the, the, the wastage rates uh, as, as all other uh, SIAs. So, uh, reporting is, immediate reporting is needed from all uh, health facilities. Uh, so, all health facilities should report uh, all the vaccines that used and uh, received used and remaining doses within two days and uh, all unopened vials uh, should return to health facilities or even the district store level within five days. And, uh, and within one week, uh, district store uh, responsibles uh, should fill in the, the, the uh, Form A and uh, send uh, Form A and all other uh, uh, all, all vaccine stocks to, to, to higher level and, and uh, wait for the outbreak response assessment decision. And uh, the national level uh, should send the, the, the Form A uh, maximum in, in two weeks' time after the, the, the last day of the, the, the outbreak. So this is the, the famous Form A. Uh, so the form has uh, three uh, parts. Uh, the, the first part is, is just giving information about the facility that reporting this, this uh, with this form. And the second part, uh, number of vials uh, received and distributed in each round. And uh, the, the, the third uh, part shows us the destruction disposal uh, status of the, the, the vials. So there's a, an explanation under the form. And uh, this form is a part of the uh, technical guidance of uh, MOPV2 use, which can be uh, downloaded from polioeradication.org website. And this is the vaccine utilization report uh, that we use uh, following all uh, all, uh, all, all uh, polio SIAs. So, so the same form needs to be uh, used. Uh, uh, together with the Form A uh, after MOPV2 to, to, to campaigns. So we said that we have to, to, to uh, remove the, 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 the vaccine from the field and then uh, we have to, to, to validate that uh, we reach to, to zero uh, type 2 vaccine stage again, uh, right after, like, like after the, 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 the switch. Actually, the, the, the whole uh, uh, removal and validation uh, stage uh, is very similar to uh, the, the switch process. So, uh, you have to reactivate the National Certification Committee uh, for, for validation, for validation, and uh, so uh, you have to prepare the national plan for, for, for validation and you have to train the monitors. Uh, it's, it's exactly the same. The only difference uh, between switch and MOPV2 validation is, uh, is the, the, the sampling uh, frame. So again, we have to, to, to visit all uh, larger uh, cold stores. Uh, national cold store, uh, sub-national cold stores, uh, all uh, till the district uh, cold stores, including the district level cold stores. And then we should uh, select all uh, high risk uh, health facilities, uh, like we did in the switch. Uh, and then uh, we have to select 25% of remaining health facilities, uh, and it should be randomly selected. Uh, during switch, uh, we selected 10% of health facilities. Uh, so that's the only difference between switch and MOPV2 uh, validation. And whenever you find uh, MOPV2 uh, stocks in uh, during the validation stage, uh, you have to, 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 to take action and uh, remove all of the, the, the MOPV2 vials uh, 
unopened, open, uh, partially used, or, or totally empty, and you have to return them uh, for, for destroyal. And uh, yeah, there is a national certification committee, uh, like like we have, uh, like we had in the the, the, the switch validation, and uh, they have to to, to uh, certify the 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 country's uh, zero uh, type two uh, OPV stage. And uh, how to dispose of MOPV2 is, uh, again, uh, uh, very similar to uh, switch. Uh, so uh, most countries uh, use boiling or autoclaving or uh, chemical inactivation during switch. And after inactivation, uh, they destroy the, 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 uh, the, the vials uh, and they, they, they just bury them. Uh, in, in most countries, so we can just uh, use the same uh, same disposal methods like we used in the switch. So it is very important to, to, to share some some key messages uh, in, in, at the at the uh, vaccinator level. Uh, the only thing they have to know that uh, they are using a special vaccine and they have to return all the vials back to to to, to health facility uh, after the uh, the vaccination uh, the daily vaccination activities so it really doesn't matter uh, uh, if the the vial is uh, used unused uh, open unopened partially used so it really doesn't matter and uh, they have to 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 report uh, how many doses were used how many doses were received, how many doses were used, how many kids vaccinated during that uh, daily session, and how many doses returned, uh, and if there is any loss, how many doses uh, were lost. Uh, uh, there might be some, some breakage or, or some some other reasons to, to, to lose the vaccine. And supervisors should, should uh, follow up all these activities, and they just uh, need to check the tele sheets daily. They just need to, to, to supervise the, the uh, vaccination teams uh, daily and uh, check the balance uh, between the number of vials uh, distributed and number of vials returned. It doesn't matter if it is empty or full. Uh, so if there is any loss, they have to search for the, 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 the lost vials. So it's very important not to leave any, any vials in the field uh, after the campaign. So uh, these are returning vials from the field. Uh, you can see that uh, some of these uh, vials in a later stage is getting closer to, to discard point. So the next day, uh, they, we have to start uh, distributing that uh, darker VVM, uh, the, the, the vials with darker VVMs first, and then we can use the other ones. So. This is uh, from Nigeria, I believe, and uh, these are the the the, the vaccine vials uh, returning from the the uh, the field uh, from health facilities, and this was a state level uh, store. So all return vials uh, are in 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 uh, you know plastic bags, large plastic bags. Uh, it is okay to, to, to keep them in these large plastic bags, but uh, the, the better way is to keep them in, in smaller uh, containers. Count them, pack them properly uh, once you receive them from the, the, the field. So you will not uh, lose track of the, 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 the records. And actually, uh, you can see a dial thermometer here, uh, which we don't recommend using. But uh, this is what uh, what was available there. But the most important thing is the the, the, the packages. So you can see uh, uh, 25 vials in each uh, package, and uh, containing 500 doses. So it is actually very nicely uh, packed, and uh, so it is very easy to to, to control the stock uh, if if we pack the vaccines in this small uh, uh, plastic bags. But here, this is very hard to, 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 to count, very hard to control the, the, the quantities, so it, we prefer this than this. And the, 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 uh, 
the equipment that you use, we said that it is okay to 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 keep it in the uh, in a vaccine carrier with with uh, ice packs, but the vaccine carrier quality is also important. You can see this uh, very low quality vaccine carrier. So it was actually, I think, uh, had some good times uh, in the past, but this is very old. Even the cover is not really uh, fitting into the, 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 the uh, vaccine carrier. So this is something uh, not very good. But the gray uh, standard vaccine carrier is on the, uh, on the back. Uh, so there are two, two vaccine carriers in this picture. So that gray one is actually quite good uh, pre-qualified vaccine carrier, and this is what we recommend, especially for the reverse cold chain. Again, you can see different types of vaccine carriers here. The, the blue one and the, the, the square uh, gray uh, with a stop sign on it are the, the, the standard pre-qualified equipment, and we really recommend using them. The other one is actually a food container. You can use it if you don't have anything else, but uh, WHO and UNICEF uh, usually provides uh, support for 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 the the, the, the campaign and uh, to 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 provide uh, better quality uh, vaccine carriers rather than food containers. This is a very bad practice. Uh, I just want to show. Uh, so the, on the right, uh, you can see the the, the BOPV vials in the red boxes, and on the left, uh, you can see the the, the MOPV2 vials uh, in in uh, white and uh, green. Uh, uh, lay, with, with, with green labels. So uh, it is very dangerous. Uh, it shouldn't be like this uh, without uh, a proper separation. Uh, if you have good vaccine handlers, uh, store managers, that's okay. But you can also see some uh, BOPV vials are, are orphaned. They are just not in the, 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 the boxes. At the top, you can see some uh, uh, wires just just uh, sitting on top of the boxes. So this is a dangerous practice. Uh, Any time they can mix POPV and, and MOPV too during the campaign. And again, you can see uh, some some often uh, MOPV2 wires. So you can find, uh, so they are not in the package. They are not in the plastic bags. So uh, some of them can be just uh, found in under these uh, vaccine, uh, the, the, the ice packs. So uh, once you finish the, the, the the campaign, you have to, to, to check all the, the, the refrigerators, freezers, and uh, try to find this, this orphaned MOPV2 wise. They shouldn't be uh, staying in the, uh, the any, any, any vaccine containers, uh, in refrigerators, freezers, or even uh, vaccine carriers and cold boxes. So we have to be very careful about this, because this can create later uh, some uh, type 2 uh, uh, vaccine dried polio virus. Uh, so, so you can see this is a, a cold room. Uh, we have uh, some uh, type uh, type two vaccine here, and uh, unfortunately you cannot see. Uh, I mean, it's very well organized, but you cannot see any labels here. So actually, we really don't know uh, which ones are uh, MOPV2, which ones are other vaccines. So uh, it's you can see good and bad practices all together here. And again, some some orphan vials uh, in, in in a vaccine uh, cold room, uh, and this is actually very common that we have to clean all the the the, the cold chain equipment before receiving the MOPV2. So we have to be sure that there is no orphan vials uh, sitting in the, uh, uh, the the cold chain equipment uh, after the the, the campaign. And a very good practice, again, uh, from Nigeria. Uh, you can see that that refrigerator is, or, or freezer, I'm not exactly sure what it is, uh, is, is labeled uh, saying that this is MOPV2 and for uh, outbreak response only. So that's very, very nice uh, practice. Uh, this is what we uh, recommend to all countries. So they are keeping all MOPV2 in a separate uh, cold chain equipment, and it is very well uh, labeled. And after uh, collecting all the wires, uh, it is also a good practice to check the, the 
what is in that uh, socks or in the in those uh, boxes uh, so you can see that there are some MOPV2 some BOPV uh, vials in the same box so it may show that uh, MOPV2 and BOPV uh, used in the same same campaign so it's uh, very important to investigate this kind of issues so we couldn't find any issue here uh, after seeing this we investigated and uh, there was no issue it was not the same campaign uh, but but it is also a good uh, practice to check uh, what is returning from the, the field if there are any uh, BOPVs returning uh, during the MOPV2 campaign or uh, if we later uh, organize a BOPV campaign we have to check if any MOPV2 wires are returning from the field and a very bad practice uh, so so all the wires just dumped into to a corner of the health facility uh, there are several vaccine wires here some of them are uh, BOPV some of them are uh, I think measles so there are several vaccine wires there and uh, this is not a very good practice and we don't recommend uh, this actually to, to uh, anywhere and so that's the the the, the uh, famous polioeducation.org website so you can find all uh, MOPV2 uh, related documents the the the, the standard operating procedures technical guidelines uh, vaccine request forms uh, and many other uh, documents here so just go to polioeducation.org tools and library and uh, then and, and you will see all these documents there and I really recommend uh, keeping this uh, this address uh, website uh, in your uh, bookmarks uh, because the, the, the documentation changes uh, very often uh, so you might have some of these documents in your in your archive but uh, if it is uh, older than six months, I uh, think that it's already changed. Uh, so because there are very frequent uh, changes and uh, revisions are coming for all these documents. So always, uh, if something happens, if you really need to use MOPV2, uh, just go to polioeducation.org yes and and download all the documents the latest version of the, the documents and you can also find some some uh, new languages added uh, documents in new languages added uh, into this archive and another source is is uh, the the cold chain and logistics uh, and vaccine management during polio supplementary immunization activities this is a, a guidance note uh, this is a small booklet uh, again you can download from the polioeducation.org uh, website uh, it's very useful uh, it's uh, if you are offline if you don't have chance to uh, reach to to, to polio education uh, documents you can find some some very useful information here uh, always and please do share with your with your colleagues and the other one is an e-learning course uh, so uh, CCLVM during polio supplementary immunization activities it's on Agora Agora is UNICEF's uh, e-learning website uh, e-learning platform it's open to everyone and uh, just go there uh, register yourself into Agora using a legitimate uh, email address and you are good to go and you can actually find uh, several other immunization related uh, e-learning courses so this uh, special course for, for uh, polio SIAs is, uh, is actually a short course we have six modules and a test and after the test uh, you can get this very nice GPI uh, certificate uh, Haruna uh, received this uh, certificate uh, Haruna is a, a vaccine uh, security and logistics advisor in Nigeria and uh, he's handling uh, all uh, vaccine logistics activities in Borno uh, state so he received this and, and uh, he said he it took only two days uh, to, to finish the whole course uh, so and, and we, we, we also checked that most of the participants 
currently there is almost 750 uh, participants uh, registered themselves for the course and 40 percent is already uh, certified so most of these participants certified participants uh, finish the course in uh, two days if you have some good internet connection so it's very I, I really recommend uh, getting this course online course I think that's all from my side. Uh, I will be happy to 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 uh, hear the, the the questions if you have any. Thank you. Thank you so much, Ahmed, for all this information. So we welcome now everybody who's online to type in your questions uh, in the message board. It's easier that way than um, speaking. That way we don't uh, talk over one another. So you just take a few moments and think about any questions you have for Ahmed or if you have experiences you'd like to share from um, MOPB2 in the field, and we're happy to um, take them. So we have one already, which is great, from Sauderine. Uh, thank you very much for the presentation. Because OPV provides collective immunity and can be seen in the stool of the child after immunization, <coughs> I want to know if there is not a risk that the MOPV2 administered to, to a child during the SIAs might mutate again when he will be in the environment and create an outbreak. If yes, what can we do to prevent it? Yeah, it, it can create an uh, outbreak, and this is why actually we really suggest uh, recommending, and we really recommend uh, collecting all the, 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 the vaccines uh, from the field, uh, from the vaccinators, and we really recommend uh, very strict uh, vaccine management uh, practices. That's the, the, the main reason uh, to, to, to do that. And after the campaign, we destroy uh, all the, 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 the vaccine wires uh, to go to, to, to zero stage. And the only reason is just to, to, to prevent this uh, outbreak risk and, and uh, to, 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 to stop uh, circulating this, this, this vaccine virus. And during the campaign, uh, high coverage is very important because uh, that mut mutated uh, s uh, vaccine virus uh, it can can circulate if the, the 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 coverage is not high immunity is not high so it is very important to to, to cover uh, all the target population there uh, to, to to stop that uh, circulation so Gerard has a question how many days should there be between two rounds of MOPV2 uh, it's it is four weeks, but but it may change. Uh, MOPV2 use is not uh, very. I mean, you have to 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 to, to expect the, the the advisory groups' uh, recommendations and GPI's recommendations. So it's nothing automatic. Nothing is. Uh, uh, I mean, you have to follow the SOPs, but also the 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 uh, GPI's uh, bodies uh, recommendations. So, uh, but normally it is four weeks. But it may change. It really depends on the, the strategy that uh, recommended for that uh, specific outbreak. So it, it may change. And Ahmed, is it correct that between rounds you would need to reapply for MOPV2 to be released? So it kind of goes on a, a mm, No, uh, the, the, the MOPV2 uh, released uh, the, 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 the form that request form is uh, sent only once and uh, before the, the first round uh, and in that form uh, we make requests for all stages for all rounds but uh, the later uh, we update the the, the, the the quantities that uh, will be uh, shipped to country uh, in the in the uh, second and uh, later rounds uh, based on the consumption and the remaining MOPV2 wires, usable MOPV2 wires in the country, and uh, we can update that. Uh, it's actually what's happening in, in Mozambique right now. So there was a request covering uh, two stages and uh, but the second stage uh, decision is, is is changed based on the the, the epidemiology and uh, is, but but there's no no uh, special request done for the for the second round so the the, the 
form should be used only for the first, uh, only before the first round, and once we get uh, approval from the the the, the DG, uh, we can just adjust the, the the quantities. Okay, very good. Another question from Sadarin, and I'll let you touch this one first, Ahmed, and then I can uh, also discuss it. But for uh, C4D, so in terms of communication for development, is there any specific recommendations on the management of MOPV2? Um, actually, uh, C4D is not uh, something that I can really comment on, but, but uh, the C4D uh, stuff in the, in the field uh, should know that, uh, I mean, there are some some uh, rumors always. Uh, some people like to 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 uh, uh, talk about MOPV2 as a hazardous material, so it's not hazardous. It's it's the same 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 vaccine. So I think it should be important to to to, to mention this uh, and clarify this. And uh, it is also uh, good to know if. Uh, if uh, C4D uh, advisors in the field or workers in the field can also uh, check if there are any any remaining vials in the field, so so they can help us to 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 to, to manage the vaccine vials. So all vials should return uh, back to the uh, back to the store, uh, central store after the campaign. And I would add to that, too, to Sodarin's question, that sometimes you have a case where so social mobilizers are also the vaccinators. So in that case, they would need to be trained uh, definitely in the vaccine management and making sure that all vials are accounted for, because that's really the critical point that Ahmed's trying to, to make here. So in terms of that, Sodarin, um, I hope that answers your questions. If you have further questions on the C4D, we can follow up with a C4D specialist offline. Another question we have here is from Bedrul, and he asks, are non-UNICEF colleagues allowed to complete the CCL and VM and other e-learning courses on Agora? And that is a most definitely yes. It's open to anyone. Uh, they're free and open courses. And we really encourage uh, both participation of UNICEF colleagues or consultants or WHO colleagues. And I think the, the WHO also partook in uh, creating the, the course as well. Is that correct, Ahmed? Yeah. So it is. Uh, they have also another uh, website, and and they can also come to to, to Agora. Uh, the the website is agora.unicef.org. Uh, so they can just uh, come to Agora and uh, take the course. So actually, we have uh, several uh, colleagues uh, registered to this course from WHO uh, already. And even UNFPA uh, World Food Program, uh, so the, the, they they also like to to, to, to get the course because uh, they usually take a part in the uh, in the outbreak response activities. And there are as well, Badrul, um other immunization specific. Yeah, that's uh, all. They are all they are all open to to, to anybody. Uh, anybody can take uh, any courses in Agora. And there are some closed courses, but uh, uh, outsiders uh, cannot see those uh, closed courses. So, so just just go to agora. Uh, .unicef .org, and there's a search box there, and and put immunization in that search box, and search for all immunization uh, related uh, material, and our course will be a. Uh, will become in that list uh, also, or just put polio uh, to to see uh, uh, CCLVM course uh, polio related courses there. <laughs> and the course course material is uh, is being translated into French now, and I'm hoping that at the end of March uh, we will have uh, the the same course in French uh, available for for the participants. Yes, and there's also, uh, like as uh, Ahmed mentioned, a number of courses in terms of communication for immunization, micro planning, a lot of different uh, like routine immunization yeah. applications that can work for polio as well. So yeah. another question exactly. here from Elisabetta. It says, how dangerous is it? How dangerous is it to have used droppers going around compared with vials? She also thanks you for your presentation. So how dangerous is it to have used droppers? 
So it is uh, the same thing. It is contaminated. If it is used with MOPV2, uh, you you think that it is contaminated with MOPV2. So this is why actually we collect uh, not just the vials, but but uh, with the droppers. So you have seen the pictures uh, showing the the, the collected uh, vials from the field. They were all having the the the, the droppers. So so uh, I just see it as a package. Uh, so that package comes all contaminated material which is uh, vial and dropper should come back together and we destroy them all together. Okay, we have a couple more questions coming. If you have some questions, please share them and we're so happy to answer them. We have one from Gerard. It says, after all the SIAs, all the vials have to be sent to the central store or at the national level. All the vials have to be destroyed then. Question. Um, it depends on the, the, the country. For example, in Nigeria, uh, for all SIS, uh, it doesn't matter if it is BOPV or MOPV2 or IPV or whatever. Uh, all SIS, all supplementary immunization activities, they collect all the vaccine miles from the field, empty or used or I mean, uh, partially used or unopened. They collect all of them. So it really depends on the, the, the country and the, the, the SIA plan. But for MOPV2, it is always, uh, it's, it's a must. We have to, to, to collect all the vaccine miles from the field. Uh, it really doesn't matter if it is empty or uh, partially used or, or unopened. It's, it's necessary for, for MOPV2. Thank you, Ahmed. A question here from Tony. He says, thanks for a very clear presentation. What is the lead time for setting up a program? Based on the large population movements that we are seeing, if a response is planned, what timeline should be in the plan since the MOPV2 is only available from central stocks? And is there anticipated to be any problem with importing the vaccine? For example, the need for MOH to approve it in the country. So, yeah, so it is actually a very good question. Uh, we, we, we put MOPV2 request in fast track. Uh, so after the, the uh, laboratory confirmation, uh, usually within seven days, uh, the vaccine arrives to the country, and within 14 days, the vaccination starts. And uh, this is done just because uh, we usually uh, cover uh, 500,000 uh, kids in uh, the, the, the first response. And uh, it is actually quite quite quick. And the 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 the, the, the campaign preparation uh, usually starts uh, in in immediately after the laboratory confirmation. So uh, within seven to two hours, usually we prepare the form and uh, send to to, to WHO uh, for for authorization. It's very quick, especially for MOPV2. But for 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 BOPV uh, for for uh, planned SIA, uh, because MOPV2 is usually uh, an outbreak response and it's not really uh, planned, uh, so we have to be very quick. Uh, for BOPV, for planned SIAs, uh, it takes longer uh, and, and usually better plans are uh, required uh, and, and things are a little bit uh, slow. But, uh, and we also have a SIA uh, calendar so so actually we know which countries are going to do uh, what kind of uh, campaign and what is the, the the number of doses required and and it may take uh, longer the preparation can take even up to three months uh, for that kind of uh, uh, planned SIAs but this is an outbreak response and this it, everything is very quick here thank you Amit Another question we have from Glenn he says what are some of the key rumors you have dealt with in regards to MOPV2 I'm sorry, Alex, I couldn't hear you. What are some of the key rumors that you have dealt with in regards to MOPV2? Actually, I mean, uh, it was nothing different than, than BOPV, uh, but uh, you might know uh, more about that uh, as a C40 expert, Alex. But uh, I think uh, it was not really different than uh, anything than, than BOPV that we, from the field, actually. 
So, yeah, I would say that it's the same as other vaccines, Glenn. Um, there can be perceptions of fear or um, it could be that the, the refusals are due to not just because of rumors, but the child is not available or there's no team or access. So it could be other issues, not only in terms of rumors, but I would say that they pertain the same to other polio vaccines. So it, the one thing that Ahmed mentioned before is that uh, people think of it as a hazardous um, material, which it isn't. So that's one of the, the misunderstandings. But otherwise, it would be similar to other um, concerns over uh, different groups that are anti-vaccination or believe that it's, um, you know, is, is going to harm a child in some way. So that, that's more of the case, but it's not specific to MOPV2. Uh, is there any other questions before we wrap up? Please ask them, as we have Ahmet here, and he'll be away in the coming weeks, so we want to get all the information from him that we can. Any more questions for Ahmet? Ahmet, do you have any uh, summary points that you want to share? Um, actually, uh, again, I mean, it's important to, 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 to record the, the, uh, the, the vaccines very carefully. I think uh, we already mentioned several times but it really is important uh, returning all the vaccine wires uh, from the field uh, to the central store uh, at the end of the, the, the outbreak response. And uh, even one, one vial uh, counts. So we shouldn't, uh, I mean, normally for the EVM assessments, uh, we accept 1% difference between the, the, the stock management tools and the, the, the actual uh, presence of vaccines in the uh, in the store but but uh, here for MOPV2 even uh, that one percent is too high for us so we, we are counting for for uh, individual vials so that's very important to bring them all back uh, to the store thank you so much Ahmed so uh, everyone is asking uh, about the presentation we will for sure send the PowerPoint presentation and the recording uh, to everybody. And uh, of course, if you have any further questions, please don't hesitate to email myself or Amit. I'll write our emails in the, in the side, I'll write my email on the side and I'll collect questions. And always we like to share the questions and answer portion with people as well for reference. So please don't hesitate to contact me for any further follow up or if you think of something afterwards. And we're happy to share the presentation and recording with you. So thank you everyone for joining us and thank you so much to Amit. Thank you. Great. Have a lovely afternoon or evening or morning, I guess, for everyone all yeah. over the world. Thank you so much. Bye-bye.